<laughs> Trading pleasantries. Oh, yeah, it, it's an emoji off. And, uh, uh, and, and what's got to be frustrating here for Levy is that he's in his hand for an extremely long time. He's got priority at this point. If he plays something, there we go. Oh, <laughs> that's glorious. That's, that's a lot of damage. Minus 34. <laughs> Welcome back to the Strixhaven Championship. It is the lower round finals. It's going to be Jean Girardot versus Matt Sperling. Jeskai turns ready and waiting. Both of these players want to go and face Sam Pardee for the championship. But who is it going to be, Cedric? I'm ready to find out. I am ready to find out as well. And I'm feeling pretty glad I'm not at the news desk. I don't have to make a pick. I just get to watch the games unfold, thankfully, uh, because this one should be pretty good. And for you Jeskai turns fans out there, we got a whole bunch of that coming up here for you, uh, both this round and the next one. So buckle up, folks. Velomachus, do your thing. We're going to take turn after turn after turn after turn or just blow people up with the uh, big old Magna Opus. We'll have to see how these games do shake out. But uh, as Mani mentioned, Jean Girardot's build of this deck is tailored more towards the creature matchup. So uh -huh. it's going to be a couple cards he's going to hope to dodge in his main deck. Both players with what I would consider to be totally fine opening hands. Not the ideal first draw step there for Matt Sperling in Velomachus Lorehold, but we will watch these players just try to work themselves towards an indomitable creativity um, more often than not <laughs> in the first game. Uh, there's a old Mizzix Mastery there for Matt. I think he knows a thing or two about that card. Yeah, he's quite familiar with that one at this point, I'd say. As we're going to see an end step curate here for John Girardeau. Sees a mountain and is going to put the Sweltering Suns into the graveyard because that will not have any good targets at least in this matchup it looks like Girardot has found three copies of memory lapse that is a whole bunch of those matt has found his copy of miscast a card that has also served him rather well here this weekend so we uh we work ourselves into an interesting point here as i definitely say we're out of the early game working ourselves into the mid game and you spoke about how Girardot does have more of a i want to beat the aggressive decks slant to his strategy this mm -hmm. weekend that's what that anger that gods represents a very poor card in this matchup it is at that unfortunately can't cycle like the other board wipe that's gone to the graveyard uh we're gonna see a treasure token made on the end step there for matt sperling expressive iteration will be his play for turn does john girardeau want to say anything about that looks like he's gonna brainstorm in response Let's see what he can find Couple of lands and a curate here. So Anger of the Gods, unsurprisingly gonna go back. It's gonna be the bottom card. You can also just kind of curate that away at some point. So that's actually pretty nice here. So one of the nice things when you're playing a Brainstorm deck and actually having additional copies of a Brainstorm style effect in curate is even though you do play Anger of the Gods and it's poor in this matchup, you do have ways to kind of make it go away. <laughs> uh, and so that, that's a pretty nice thing. Make it stop, make yeah. it go away. Absolutely. This little one one's gonna chip in here for one point of damage down to 17 goes Spurling. Curate and memory lapse of plenty in hand there for John Girardeau as Brainstorm hits the stack for Matt Spurling. It's gonna be so tempting to send this away, but uh, besides not to, just gonna hold the fort there is John. As we find Brainstorm, memory lapse, and Rogan Triumph off the top here. I have to imagine Velomachus is gonna go back into the deck. The question is, what is the other card going to be? As Matt was already hovering over the big dragon, so that's one. It looks like Time Warp is going to be number two. Not really looking at a time warp game here in any meaningful way. So Matt using the power of Brainstorm to put these powerful cards back into the deck because now is not the right time to be drawing and using them. So sending a couple cards back there, big old dragon, the time warp effect, and then shuffling them away with Fable Passage. Mm, will Matt lean red or will Matt lean blue? Matt's going to lean red. That'll give him triple red now for both Indomitable Creativity and if you're doing a mountain check as well uh, for Dwarven Mind. So life is all good there, but still able to cast plenty of blue spells. So it looks like just a land there for Matt. And John's going to play a Curate, so uh, let's, uh, let's get this Anger of the Gods out of here, huh? <laughs> I bet he can't wait to get that off the top of the library. <laughs> that goes into the bin. Dwarven Mind is brought to hand, and a Brainstorm is the draw for turn. So you got to feel pretty tempted here to uh, do some indomitable creativity shenanigans, especially with Memory Lapse backup. 
You yeah, gotta you be know, patient here. Is it is it worth the risk? So that's the question you have to ask yourself a bunch, right? Because you're not underneath any pressure whatsoever. Matt is spending time sculpting. John is more or less doing the same, picking up a brainstorm the last turn. So if you go for it and you are incorrect in your assessment that you're clear for takeoff, you may not get another turn and automatically be down a game. So we're just going to see, in my estimation, just more hits from these Dwarven Mine tokens and mm -hmm. just more sculpting here for both players. Who would have thunk it in this deck that uh, most attacks would be done by two little 1-1s? One At least for now. It, <laughs> it, it, it gets a little better than that, I think, at some point this game. <laughs> Brainstorming away a couple cards. Fable Passage is going to shuffle that library up once more. I'm going to go find an island for Matt Sperling. And a second brainstorm to boot. Yep, Matt is sculpting, sculpting, sculpting. I've mentioned this before, but Matt is a player who celebrates all the formats of magic, be it vintage, be it legacy, be it modern, be it historic here, even old school. He loves, loves, loves to game in his spare time. And, you know, he has cast a brainstorm across many, many, many different formats. So if there's one person that had to be thrilled with this as an addition to historic, it had to be him. I imagine many people were quite uh, quite pleased with the addition of Brainstorm, and some not so much so. <laughs> Looking at all, uh, all of the non-blue and red players out there. <laughs> yeah, it is a Steam Fence world, folks. We are just trying to cast our spells in it, and you are seeing that here <laughs> in this matchup and our next one, too. This Jeskai Turns deck is absolutely phenomenal, and Expressive Iteration is a huge reason why there is a Steam Fence untapped. And yeah, Matt, I mean, again, we're just gonna see a ton of sculpting. Matt has seven cards. You're gonna see some sculpting here with a brainstorm on the end step, draw a couple of cards this way. You know, players just kind of getting set up, but John does have the uh, the benefit of, of, again, getting in for a couple points of damage every single turn. Yeah, he does it that, so eventually Sperling will have to pull the trigger on something here, but no major rush. As you mentioned, just the two one ones chipping in for some damage each turn. So the thing that I always find interesting about a matchup like this is who's going to make their move, who's going to go for it, who's going to actually try something. Now, Matt is using his life total as a resource right now, right? He's mm -hmm. not panicking at all. He has no reason to panic. You know, 12 is a lot. He could play this team fence on tap, fall down to 10, um, you know, and then that's still five attacks from those two tokens. Now, you know, that's, of course, not taking Prismari Command and some other things into the equation, but Matt felt comfortable enough going down to 10, and it looks like it might be time for fireworks. Okay. Interesting. I gotta say, I oh, didn't think Sperling would be the first to go for it, but here he is, Indomitable Creativity on the stack, targeting that treasure token, and Memory Lapse is going to be fired off here on this powerful sorcery. I wonder how much he wants to fight. That's the big question I have here, is how badly do we want to battle over this particular thing? Because th this could be as simple as, okay, that's fine, right? Yep. This lapse, great. I don't, I'm not even gonna battle over this one. Yeah, totally fine, cool. Didn't need that one anyway. Have a spare one in hand. John does have access to, yeah, and he's just going to say, that's totally fine. Leave my counter magic up. A, a, a really, really good test spell, because we know what happens if creativity resolves. Mm -hmm. But also worth noting that you have put your shields down in a, a relevant way as far as mana is concerned. But Matt, that was a conscious decision for him. And now are we going to maybe see a time warp here? We are. Looks like it. Gerardo feeling pretty comfortable in his position with the two memory laps back up. It's a good way to test for spells from Sperling, too, because this turn isn't really necessary. It's kind of a nice to have. It's not a necessity at this point. Mm -hmm. But we will see John Gerardo fight over this to try and get even more counter magic out of Matt Sperling's hand. And so Sperling, now looking at that miscast in his hand, this lapse is going to resolve, and now you miscast the time warp. Okay. And so now mm, memory boy. lapse. Yeah, now so now you memory lapse again, I think, right? You cash in this uh you cash in this treasure. I mean you've committed this much. Keep going. Yeah, I mean it's interesting because Sperling does have those two treasures available on his side of things, and so mm -hmm. this is Giardo's protection against Matt's big turn, but it looks like we're gonna see a battle over it. The question is, does Gerardo think he can win? Yellow, let's see. Nice from yep. Sperling. Gonna get an extra turn. Magma Opus drawn off the top of the library. John Gerardo is free and clear to get swinging here with a big dragon if he fires off this indomitable creativity. Is he gonna go for it? 
Yeah, I think you creativity here for one. You get Velomachus. That's an attack for six. Puts your opponent down to two. Um, and it would take a lot for Matt to make it through this turn. And the revealed card, I believe... Well, we're going to see what the revealed card is. Excuse me. That oh, is a... Oh, you know, <laughs> I mean, Matt, Mystic's Mastery, take your pick. How would you like to kill Matt Sperling in game number one here? They will all work just fine. It was that third copy of Memory Lapse there that stunted... Matt Sperling, and that is going to allow John Giardo to win game number one here, Ailey. Oh, I bet he's breathing a sigh of relief because he's not super favored in that with all of the dead draws and those board wipes. So he's going to get that out of there as fast as you can lick it. He split it, you'd imagine. Yeah, a couple of stinkers in the main deck, that Anger of the Gods, Sweltering Suns, as we did mention. But again, worth noting these blue red strategies, when you do have Brainstorm in your deck, when you do have Curates and, you know, Fetching and Shuffling and all of their stuff, you are able to overcome that a little bit here. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see Sperling go to this sideboard plan that has worked so well for him all weekend long. Three Mystical Disputes, two Ether Gusts, two Fries, two Nezahals, four Shark Typhoons. For for John, he doesn't get as good after sideboard as Sperling does, but it's not bad. Uh, three Typhoons, two Commence, two Fry, three Mystical Dispute. Uh, it looks like an Into the Royal. Been a hot minute since I've seen that one alongside Blink of an Eye. And both of these players getting away from Velomachus, their Time Warps. Um, indomitable creativities, uh, all that jazz. I I'm curious though, Blink of an Eye and Into the Royal are the same card? Pretty much, just barring the name and the card art, right? <laughs> I yeah, wonder I mean, what uh, that inclusion was for. <laughs> you're, you're splitting there, maybe for funsies, maybe, you know, meddling mage style effects. If you yeah. think of, if you think of, uh, if you think of Kenya Kahiro, uh, yesterday, or mm -hmm. excuse me, two days ago, <laughs> um, but you know, a card like Comply. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's, it, no it, playing it, this card. It, help, it helps there. For um, those so. very fringe situations, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, curious indeed. But uh, taking a look at the opening hands here, you're going to have to mulligan one is Matt Sperling. And kick things off with a Katria Triumph. So you hate to mulligan, but uh, happier with this hand and... You know, for the most part, these decks don't really mind going down a card in the beginning because they just get through so many cards with this powerful brainstorm effect. Yeah, that's the thing that you'll notice when you are watching these Jeskai turn decks in action, which is they're going to get to play their game, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to get to see plenty of cards, cycling shark typhoons, casting brainstorms, expressive iterations, all that stuff. So, you know, the likelihood that, you know, someone's going to get, I guess, mana screwed here uh, is extremely unlikely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they might miss their fifth or sixth land drop, but, <laughs> you know, the, the first couple of turns, they should have plenty of mana to operate and they can find that mana via Brainstorm. Uh, and you're seeing Spurling here. I mean, look, he, he can cycle a Shark Typhoon for a much larger amount than one over the course of the game, but he's got a backup Shark Typhoon. This is going to draw his copy of Nezahal. He'll draw a card for his turn, looking for land four. He found it. So there you go. Yeah, also you're not too sad to make just a little itty bitty baby shark because that is another target for indomitable creativity if any copies are left in there to try and get out Nezahol Primal Tide. And, and think about it, those points in that first game, they added up from the Dwarven mm -hmm. Mines, you know, sure a couple of hits here, a couple of hits there. Now it only takes Velomachus hitting perfect one time uh, with that time warp uh, via Mizzix Mastery. And, you know, those points matter. They do force you to act at some point. So Spurling going to get some beatdowns going here in the yeah. air with another shark. I do like this approach. You get threats on the battlefield that can't be answered by counter spells. Sure, they can be removed if there is any removal in, but most of the time there isn't. So just happy to keep cycling through the deck, finds another brainstorm, has mystical dispute to protect the creatures or whatever threat he wants to deploy at a later stage. So looking pretty good here for Spurling on the attack. Yeah, at least at the early stages of things. And it is worth remembering, too, if Spurling's going to try to resolve a brainstorm here, and that's going to work, found a couple of lands. Uh, is that players have sideboarded out like the majority of their removal. Yeah. You know, they'll have access to a couple of fries, but um, a decent amount of the removal has actually gotten out of the deck. Uh, so that's just another thing to remember here. Shocking in the steam vents on the end step. Here we're going to see John Gerardo casting a brainstorm, has the Fable Passage shuffle away. Any, what did you call them? Stinkers, Cedric? Stinkers. I got a stinkers. lot I got a lot of words I can use for bad draws and bad cards. Look, but... look line and stinkers. Most of them are not broadcast <laughs> nice. friendly, though, I imagine. That's true. That's true. So we're just going to stick <laughs> with stinkers here uh, as Giardo is going to resolve this brainstorm. One thing I also want to point out right now on Spurling's side is two cards are going to be headed back here. It looks like both copies of Mystic's Mastery, and perhaps we'll see a shuffle. Uh, Spurling has a steam vents on top. That's land six. Mm -hmm. uh, Nezahal underneath that. 
Um, and so what he is looking for, of course, is land seven to be able to cast Neza Hall, probably tap out for it, if I'm being honest, yeah. uh, and just try to win the game that way, like he has so many times in these Steam Vents based mirrors. Yeah, it's very difficult once Neza Hall hits the board to get rid of that. So yeah, it's, uh, it's a case of, all right, do or die for the opponents on the other side of the battlefield. But uh, two very, very juicy cards in hand there in Commence the Endgame, as we're going to see Prismari command disputed there man get get that out of here don't want to give your opponent a treasure don't want to give them any opportunity to get any value from that powerful three mana instant so see you later prismari command dwarven mine's going to be the land for turn shark typhoon in hand so we'll be able to jump in the way of one of these sharks but there is that fry ready and waiting for such a play from gerardo well spurling didn't find mana number seven so Nezahal is going to keep, it looks like, keep just going on back. Going to be the last card um, that's put back. I guess, what, last card, first card, whatever you want to say. It's going to be on top <laughs> of the deck for Brainstorm. He has no reason to really keep that in his hand. It's going away. <laughs> so let's see how we're going to organize this. Because I might actually be wrong about this as he kind of goes back and forth a little bit here on the ordering to see what card he's going to draw. And so he is going to draw Brainstorm. Nezahal is going to be underneath that. Keep in mind that Spurling hasn't played his land yet for the turn, picked up another copy of Shark Typhoon. That'll be something to do as well. Spurling swinging in here for three. John Gerardo happy to take it. Goes down to 13. Steve Vince shocked in down to 16 goes Matt Spurling, but still very much the beat down at this point of the game as we're going to see an end step Shark Typhoon for three from John Gerardo. Sperling does have the answer for that in Fry, mm -hmm. but now here's a land. So now commence the end game works itself mm -hmm. into the equation. Gonna make some big old zombies. Wouldn't be surprised here. Let me see. So, so this is gonna be an attack. Gonna take the fourfold on to 12. Does Sperling go cycle Shark Typhoon for just two? Draw my Brainstorm, cast my Brainstorm, draw Nezahal and two other cards? Yeah, see if we can get to a land. Looks like he's going to go for the full three here, okay. get a bigger creature on the battlefield, and keep delivering the beatdown. Okay. Well, I was just a little curious if we might see that kind of play. So there's Brainstorm plus Nazahal. Cards that Spurling knew was coming, cards that you and I knew were coming as well. And now we go beatdowns again. Oh, man. This commence. Commence into commence. Is that enough for lethal? Well, I'm not sure. Uh, well, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's an eight, eight. And then eh, maybe with the whole army thing that's going on there, and it is uncounterable. Yeah, and uh, no interaction for it. No brazen borrow or anything like that. Yeah. Um, that's a really good question. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Hmm. <laughs> and so there's it's also one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's a seven, seven that'll be made, right? Four, one, two, three, six. Cast the card down to five cards. Okay, so yeah, seven, seven. Okay. And then the draw the next turn, cost commence, draw two more. Six, seven. So it'll be 14, 14. Yeah, that's, I mean, that thing's huge. <laughs> that's pretty chunky. Yeah. You can't counter it. I thought Nezahal was a big boy. It is. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sperling supposed to, was, was Sperling supposed to leave back a 1 1 shark or something? Um, Interesting, 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 interesting. Oh, I bet John is just sitting there saying, please don't play a creature. Oh, are we going to see it? Are we going to see the biggest creature on the battlefield this weekend? Commence the end game. That's going to make a 7-7. Seven, seven. Turn's going to get passed back. There's another one in hand. I mean, do you just... Are we going to go for it? And yeah, we can do you... it instant speed, right? Okay, so this is... Okay, so this is a please clean... Go for it. This is a clean 7 Oh, please go for it. You oh, just you we're just gonna see it. You just commence again, right? And is that yes. it? Yes. Is that really it? Oh my. God, I love this so much. John Gerardo with the commence, the end game. Gonna make that into a 15-15 wow. and swinging for the win here against Matt Sperling. There's nothing wow. he can do. Just back to back commence for game. I am shook. John Girardeau with the win in style of 15-15. Unanswerable threat there to get the victory in the lower finals. That's going to send him through to the championship match against Sam Party.